back to all these organelles inside your cell but let's talk about the nucleus because this is the brain this is the command center this is the library of your cells and why do i say that well the nucleus is where you find nucleic acids more specifically that's where you find the majority of the dna in your cell so again nucleic acids these are long polymers these chains of nucleotides and dna these have deoxyribonucleic acids and RNA are, stands for ribonucleic acid. Now this is the structure of DNA, that double helix. And what, you know, um, what does it mean by that? Well, you have two strands of DNA and they're kind of twisted around. Again, that helical shape referring to some sort of spiral. And what we have with DNA, well, your DNA, you have actually three billion base pairs. So if you see in this previous picture, each of these pairings is one base pair. So you actually have in each of your nuclei about 3 billion of these pairings in just one nucleus. So your DNA has that many. And if you took all the DNA, all the chromosomes inside of just one nucleus and stretched it out end to end, it would be about six feet long end to end. So again, this is the nucleus, has a lot of DNA, the majority of your chromosome, or has your chromosomal DNA. Not talking about mitochondrial DNA, but just nuclear DNA. So if you took all the DNA in a nucleus, it would be about as tall as this six foot guy right here. So a cell nucleus is about the 10 micrometers across. So that's very, very tiny. So how tiny is a micrometer? Well, if you have a human hair, somehow a cell nucleus or like a cell nucleus is actually super tiny. Like if we did this to scale, it would be very, 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 very small. You can't even see it in here. And then, so how do you fit all of this DNA, which would be six foot long, into something you can't even see? And so how do you do that? Well, this is what we have here. So DNA packaging, look at her long hair and how can she make it into more compact air or how do you take long hair and make it into a more compact structure? You wind it up and over, up, up, up and up until it's kind of this tight bun, right? And, or it's not just women who can do that, men can do that as well. But this is how your DNA is able to take six feet of DNA and compact it into something your eye can't see. So what you have is DNA and it's wrapping around these little globs here are little proteins called histones. And that's a little, like maybe if you're taking cell biology or if you're a bio major, or if you're going to, well, maybe nurses need to know this too. But what happens is that these proteins help to wind up the DNA, and then if you wind up and coil this DNA over and over again, you get these structures called chromosomes. So again, it's like trying to take a long, very thin structure, but making it more compact and easier to work with. So this is what we have here. And again, DNA is very long, but you're able to compact it. Or if you remember Moana, what did she do one time like to get her hair out of the way? She has that long flowing hair and remember she took it, she wrapped it around and made that titta bun and it's very compact, right? Very neat, very calm instead of very long and flowing. Same with DNA. Your cells are able to kind of unfurl their DNA and also compact them when needed. Now, nucleotides, let's talk about this again. So remember that the basic nucleotide has a phosphate, a sugar, and a base. And this part right here, the part, the base part is the one that can vary. Like remember those four letters in DNA, A U or not A, <laughs> A T C G. But this is DNA and RNA. So what we have here, ribose is a sugar. It is a monosaccharide. Here's our other examples of monosaccharides, but it has, it doesn't have six carbons. It's four, it's five carbons. So that's what we have here. So ribose. Oh yeah, sometimes it's been doing that with the. Uh, was it the live lectures sometimes it doesn't publish as it doesn't publish as public by default it goes by unlisted don't worry i'll handle that after this lecture but again back to this so thank you for that um so, oh, was it well i can't say names during broadcast because yeah they it said don't do that but anyway back to ribose so <laughs> Ribose is a sugar, but what's deoxyribose? What's the difference? Well, the thing is that this is an oxygen or a hydroxyl group, actually. But the difference is that it's pretty much one oxygen atom. So deoxyribose has one less oxygen. So whenever you see that prefix D, it's like when you have contaminations versus decontamination. Decontamination, you're removing the contamination. Deoxyribose is ribose, but you're minus one oxygen. So that's the difference between deoxyribose versus ribose but the overall structure are very similar 
But this is what the difference is between DNA and RNA, just one ox less oxygen molecule on that sugar. So again, DNA has this set of four nucleobases. So you have the sugar and phosphates, but it can vary which nucleobase you have in, along a nucleic acid. Whereas RNA, you have these four, and again, again these are the, the RNA does not have thymine, it has uracil instead. And this is how you link the nucleic acids. So remember our previous example, it's kind of like that friendship bracelet. You have that constant part that repeats over and over again, but it's these nucleobases that dangle off. This varies depending on the sequence and chromosome and gene. And we'll get into chromosomes and gene real quick. So what's a why is it important to know these bases? Well, it's a phenomenon called base pairing. So the thing about these bases, they, they don't randomly link together. And it's not always like, it's not going to put an A link to an A or a G link to a T. There's always a consistent base, or I should say like there should be a consistent base uh, basing because this is how, when it doesn't match up correctly, this is what causes problems with your cells and your DNA. But anyway, so the normal pairing for these nucleic ba bases are A and T and C and G. So, but the thing is that with RNA, remember RNA doesn't have thymine, it has uracil instead. So instead of A and T, and if you have DNA binding to RNA or RNA binding to RNA, it's a, it's a to U. So here's a nice mnemonic I like. So a teacher asked you to get coffee. And I know this is not the grammatical you, but why does this work? Well, it tells you the base pairings. So you have A and T, G and C, and DNA. But again, in RNA, there's that little twist. So this is why it's a U here. So instead of T, you have a A and U. So A binds to T, A binds to U, G binds to C. Now, the thing is that why is that important? Why do we care about base pairing? Is that nice to know or need to know? Well, the thing is that nucleic acids, these contain information. So DNA has information on how to make every single protein in your body, how to make different types of cells, how to respond to hormones, and pretty much anything or everything your cells can potentially do. Now, your cells don't do everything, like every cell in your body doesn't do the job of every, of every other cell, like your cell, your neurons, aren't going to work like your muscle cells, your muscle cells aren't going to work like your blood cells. But in theory, like when you start out as an embryo and then you start developing these different types of cells, all of that information to make those different types of cells is encoded in your DNA. So this is why nucleic acids are very important.